Okay. How many of you, I'm afraid to ask this question, how many of you are planning to apply to, you know, that other school, U University of Florida? University of Central Florida? Yeah. FIU? Let's see, FAU is the closest one, right? Right? Okay. And there's some others, but I'll, I'll skip that for now. Well, let me tell you what I'm going to be talking about today. When you get to one of these places, I want you to be successful. Those of you who come to Florida State University might end up in my classroom. And I'd be glad to have you there. But I, when you arrive in my classroom, I want you to ace my class. Nothing would make me happier than if every student in my class earned an A every semester. The primary reason that doesn't happen is because students arrive in my classroom not fully prepared to succeed. And it isn't just me. I talk to professors from around the state and other places in the nation. And that happens there, too. So what I want to talk to you today about is how to make sure when you arrive at Florida State University or that other place, the blue and orange place, that you're ready to succeed. Or at UCF, or at FIU, or FAU, okay? And that's why you should care. If you arrive at our university and you want to do something that I think is cool, I want you to be ready to succeed in that. So let's get started. All right, well, first thing I'm going to talk about is money. So it turns out what I've done here is listed 25 college majors plus ties, so there's actually more than 25 that as of February 2023 were the highest paid college majors. <coughs> okay, so I don't know if you can see, a lot of them are engineering, it's chemical engineering, computer engineering, there's computer science. Physics is up here, okay. Um, all the ones in red are STEM careers, careers that require a lot of a lot of competence in math and science. Okay. Now, not only do these careers pay well, I think they're really cool, and some of you may believe they're really cool too. You get to do cool stuff, and I'll talk about a few of the cool things that people who graduate in these fields get to do. But I just want you to take a look at these. These are early career median wages. So this is a few years into your career. On the average, you're making more than $70,000 in some of these. Okay. So those of you who are worried or asking the question, is college worth it? Does college actually open opportunities to me that I wouldn't have if I didn't go the answer, at least in these majors, is clearly yes. Okay, let me talk about a few things you can do if you major in fields like this. Let's start with quantum computing. How many of you have heard of quantum computing? Okay, so computing going back, let's see, 80 years, okay, has always been built on little switches that can be set at zero or one. Now we're actually going to be making computers that don't use little switches, but use atoms that have a lot more settings than zero and one. They have lots more settings. So this is going to change the way we do computing forever. It's going to change everything. Calculations that couldn't be done in any practical sense will be doable now. And if you're interested, if you, you've heard of artificial intelligence, right? That's going to take a lot of computing power. This is the sort of thing 
that could provide the power to do that, that kind of computing. Who works on this stuff? Well, it's physicists, it's engineers, it's computer scientists. Okay, I don't know if you can snap a picture of that URL if you're actually interested in this sort of thing. You can look up more about it. Okay, this isn't, people who do low-level programming are not going to be working on these projects, at least not for a long time to come. Right now, it's the frontline professionals, the frontline physicists, the frontline engineers, the frontline computer scientists who are going to be doing these things. <coughs> Okay, just up the road, well, not just up the road, but Jacksonville isn't too far from here. This is going to be a new facility for treating cancer in a brand new way. So when we treat right now, or for the most part, when we treat cancer with radiation, with x-rays, for example, not only do the x-rays affect the tumor itself, but the x-rays also affect the healthy tissue in the vicinity of the tumor. So not only does it kill the tumor, it kills the healthy tissue too. And that's not a good thing. So if you really want to go after a tumor aggressively, but you don't want to kill the heavy, the, the nice, healthy tissue around the tumor, you need a new tool. And this sort of therapy has been done in Europe, but it's never been done in North America. And in Jacksonville, it's being done for the first time in North America. It will use uh, beams of carbon ions accelerated to very high speeds, 50, 60% of the speed of light, and those carbon ions, that, that speed is chosen very specifically to deposit all of its energy in the tumor and not in the healthy tissue around the tumor. That is a huge advance for cancer patients. <laughs> so what professionals are going to be working on this? Well, once again, physicists and engineers are involved. Physicists do the basic science. In fact, the basic science on this is not completely understood yet. And we're actually do, doing work at the Florida State University Nuclear Physics Accelerator Facility, where I'm a, I'm a member of the laboratory there. We're doing the basic science to make sure that the physicians, the scientists, and the engineers at Mayo Clinic Jacksonville can get this exactly right. They can get those carbon ions to deposit all their energy in the nasty cancer tumor and not harm the surrounding, not harm the surrounding tissue. Okay, this seems relevant, right? Hurricanes, Ian came in from the other side of the peninsula Someday, there'll be a storm that comes in from the Atlantic side. You want to know, with as much lead time as you can possibly get, where that storm's going to go and how strong it's going to be. Okay? So, FSU meteorology professor Allie Wing, she's like, I think she's just in her, she's just in her 30s. That sound, may sound old to you. It sounds young to me. She's a young person who is rapidly advancing the science of hurricane prediction. And we need more people like her, and we need more people trained in meteorology who can take advantage of those discoveries and make great predictions about where hurricanes are going to go and how strong they're going to be. I don't know how many of you remember Ian, but Ian was a surprise. It kind of came in and then quickly, quickly uh, spun up, and we had a lot of trouble predicting where along the Gulf Coast 
Hurricane Ian was going to land. Dr. Wing and other people like her are trying to advance the science of that prediction that affects all of the state of Florida and other places, other states along the Atlantic coast and along the Gulf Coast. The people who are working on this are meteorologists, but meteorologists working at this level are really atmospheric physicists. In fact, Ali's new, new graduate student is a former student of mine. He just graduated with a bachelor's degree in physics at FSU, and he's gonna set, he's gonna say he's gonna set the world on fire, but what he's actually gonna do is make Florida safer. You've heard of artificial intelligence. I mentioned I'm a nuclear physicist. So I happen to know Michelle, Dr. Kuchera, Professor Kuchera at Davidson College. She's using artificial intelligence um, to help us do better nuclear physics experiments. But of course, you're already using artificial intelligence. It's talking to you on your phone. <clears throat> it may be, may be talking to you on ChatGPT too. How many of you have actually tried out ChatGPT? Chat mm -hmm. Is it cool or what? I haven't tried it actually, but it's out there. But that kind of artificial intelligence can be used for all kinds of things. And it will be used for um, actually improving the way that we teach too. Okay, how many of you are thinking about going to medical school? <laughs> Good. Okay. All right. So, this is this is a ranking of college majors by how well students in those majors do on the medical college admissions test. So, if you want to go to medical school, <clears throat> Go to college, you take the prerequisite courses for medical school while you're an undergraduate, and then eventually you take the medical college admissions test. And your score on that exam is very, very important to your admissions prospects. Okay, so you might have thought that if you go to a college where there's actually a major called pre-med, that would be a good major to sign up for. A lot of people are convinced that biology is the best major to prepare for pre for, for the MCAT, the Medical College Admissions Test in medical school. But if you look at the top of the list, the college major with the highest ranking, the highest average score on the Medical College Admissions Test is computer science. I'll bet that wasn't on your bingo card. Biophysics is second. Biomedical engineering is third. Then there's economics, physics, mathematics. And then we start getting the majors that actually you might have expected, like neuroscience or biochemistry. But you should not, if you want to be a physician, you should not assume that you should major in biology. And even if you do major in biology, there's a lot of things you need to know now about preparing to be a successful biology major. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So, what do people like me, what do college professors want you to do in high school to be prepared to succeed in our classrooms? All of you who raise your hands who are thinking about medical school, we want you to come to FSU or wherever you go and blow us away. We want you to blow us away. Okay, sometimes that doesn't happen, but we want you to blow us away. So here's how you prepare to blow us away. 
if you're thinking about a college major in engineering, and remember, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be an engineer. You might major in biomedical engineering and then go on to medical school. Right? If you are thinking about majoring in engineering, the American Society for Engineering Education wants you to know that in high school, you should have pre-calculus, calculus course, and chemistry, and physics. When you're an engineering major, you take a lot of math. Okay? You take, take differential equations, all kinds of things. Okay? Taking your first calculus course while you're still here in high school is a very smart thing to do. And it's for the chemistry and physics. So about a third of the students who come to my class in the first semester, and I teach the physics course that's taken by students majoring in engineering and computer science and meteorology and, of course, physics. About a third of those students did not take a high school physics class. Those students earn, on the average, a grade that is a full letter grade lower than the students who did take a high school class. And in fact, if you look at the students who really struggle in my class or don't succeed at all, nearly all of them, <coughs> nearly all of them are students who didn't take a high school physics class. Now, I'm going to mention that other, the blue and orange school. They tell you that you can't even take the, their equivalent of the class that I teach unless you've either taken a high school physics class or they make you take a substitute, and it's an online class. It's horrid, okay? You don't want to do that. You really want to take physics class while you're in high school so that UF, there I said it, or Florida Poly, or the University of North Florida, or even Miami-Dade College. I mean, a lot of institutions around the state. Then you can go and enter as an engineering major, go right in to the engineering physics class and be successful. Okay. Now, everybody knows a student who went to college, took their engineering physics class without having a high school class and succeeded. And I know them too, okay? But the vast majority of those students really struggle. And remember that, I just said one letter grade. And I said, well, what's, why is a one letter grade a big deal? Well, to maintain your bright future scholarship, you need to maintain a 3.0 grade point average. I'm going to say something really mean, but if you're a political science major, maintaining a 3.0 is pretty straightforward. If you're an engineering major, or even a biochemistry major, you're going to be skating on that, most people are skating on that, on that edge, working really hard to keep their GPAs above 3.0. Okay. <clears throat> computer science. Remember, computer science was the number one college major on the medical college admissions test. So it's a good major for all kinds of things, including working on artificial intelligence, quantum computing, lots of cool things. Okay. And you think, well, if I want to be a computer science major, I just need to take a lot of programming classes. And I hope you have the opportunity to take programming classes here and that you take advantage of those opportunities. But that's not enough. Okay. What, the, so my, I have a friend of mine who's a reporter at the Orlando Sentinel, which is a bit of a drive from here. And she talked to the head of the UCF computer science department. 
And when she asked him what he wished that students took while they were in high school, he didn't talk about programming. He talked about calculus and physics. Computer, computer science majors have to take a lot of math, something called discrete math, but also a lot of calculus. And they also have to take physics in most places. The computer science majors who show up in my classroom are in two categories. The students who took the physics and the chemistry that they should have taken in high school and the students who didn't. And you can guess who succeeds and who doesn't. And the worst, one of the worst things that happens in my classroom, a computer science major will have a $70,000 a year job waiting for them when they graduate and they fail my physics class. That happens all the time. And it's not, that is not a good thing. Okay, back to meteorology. I mentioned meteorologists are really atmospheric physicists. Okay. So the Penn State Department of Meteorology and, Computer, uh, and Atmospheric Science publishes a page that says, this is what you should do in high school. And what it says is, you of course should take earth sciences. They want you to know something about how the atmosphere works. But they want you to take physics in high school and chemistry in high school. And if you think about it, that makes sense, right? There's a lot of chemistry going on in the atmosphere. <clears throat> and they want you to take mathematics through at least pre-calculus. So it says, what they say is students who have completed a course in calculus and or a course in computer programming, there's that programming again, will have an advantage when they come to Penn State, or by the way, Florida State, and choose a meteorology major. I have too many meteorology majors who show up in my classroom who had no idea that being a meteorologist involved physics and mathematics. And that never goes well. OK, well, obviously, if you want to be a physicist, you should take physics in high school, but you should also try to get that first year of calculus in as well. All right, I just went kind of a lightning round with a number of college majors, okay? And here's a simple summary. While you're in high school, here in Palm Beach County, here at John I, Make sure you take chemistry, physics, and a calculus class. And you'll be ready to succeed when you go to Florida State University, or that other blue and orange place, or even UCF. I have friends at UCF, so I can't say anything bad about them. Okay, or FIU or FAU. I know the chair of the physics department at FAU, and this is what he wants you to, to do too. Okay. Now, is taking physics weird? No. About two out of every five high school graduates in the United States take a physics class. Okay, here in Florida, it's a much smaller number. It's only one out of every five. Okay, but that doesn't, it's still a normal thing to do. If you're thinking about a career in a STEM field at all, you should be doing this. And calculus isn't weird either. Well, it's not too weird. 15% of the nation's high school graduates take a calculus course. That's normal for college going students. Now, maybe some of you, how many of you are thinking about being lawyers? Any future lawyers in the room? Okay, good. So I like lawyers. I'm married to a lawyer. Two of my three kids are lawyers. <clears throat> yeah. Let me tell you what makes you extraordinarily 
extraordinarily valuable as an attorney. If you have a strong math and science background, you are super lawyer, okay? My two kids have bachelor's degrees in STEM fields. Their opponents find them terrifying. They're still young, okay? Yesterday, I, was, I just came back from visiting my granddaughter, so I was in the house while my oldest child, who's a 35-year-old attorney, was explaining to an expert witness how to talk about his own mathematical analysis, okay? So having these skills, having the kinds of skills you develop in a calculus class, in a physics class, and then if you carry them forward into college, get a STEM bachelor's degree, those skills can go in many, many, many different directions. And if you actually break out of your specific STEM career and go into another career like lawyering, like litigation, you are, you are scary. And your opponents want nothing to do with you. Okay? And that's a good thing for an attorney. You want, attorneys want to be scary. That's, that's the thing about being an attorney. Let me just mention a couple of other, couple other majors. How many, how many people want to be architects? Anybody want to be an architect? Okay, you think architecture is an art field, right? Architecture is an art field, but it's not. Okay? It's not. It's, it's actually something very close to engineering. And the Syracuse School of Architecture wants you to know that if you're going to be an architecture major in college, you should have physics. And it says physics up here, but the math is really important, at least a pre-calculus class. And calculus is nice. My architect daughter had to take multivariable calculus in college. So she liked having the calculus, um, the calculus head start. Astronomy. Um, anybody thought about astronomy? This is applied physics. Yeah, you want to see stars. It's not just about looking at the stars. It's about understanding the physics of stars. And let me get back to biology. Okay. Iowa State says, if you want to be a biology major, Okay. Minimum of one year of high school chemistry, one year of high school physics, and other great courses. I mean, like you have a marine science course here. That's a great thing to take. But it shouldn't replace the biology, the basic biology and the chemistry and physics courses that you need in high school to prepare for success as a college biology major. And in addition, biologists actually take a lot of mathematics, including, including calculus. And you can get that calculus done here instead of waiting until you take it in college. Chemistry, once again, if you want to be a chemistry major, physics, chemistry, one year biology. And if you want to go to medical school, if you want to go to medical school, then once again, in high school, chemistry, physics, and a, a good deal of math. Now, I don't have a slide up here, but I want to mention some things about two-year degrees. So here at Palm Beach State College, right down the road, you have opportunities to do things in two years instead of going to school for four years that require or that can give you the opportunity to get great salaries when you finish up in two years. So you can get out, make forty-five, fifty-five, sixty-five thousand dollars a year as a medical technician um, in any number of fields. I went through those two-year degrees, the requirements for those two-year degrees, and what I found was that many of them require you to take 
college level physics and college level chemistry. So even if you're only planning to earn a two year degree so that you can go straight on and get a great job, you should still take chemistry and physics in high school so that you make sure that when you get into those, into those programs, the chemistry and physics classes you'll take at Palm Beach State are easy for you. You want to blow them away. You don't want to see things in college for the first time. You want them to be familiar. You want them, you want to have confidence going in. And you want your professor to be able to look at you four weeks into the first semester and say, oh yeah, the student's going to be fine. They're, they came here well prepared to succeed. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>Cooking is certainly a chemistry thing, right? I, you, you can't but benefit from learning chemistry before you go off to culinary school. So I, I think the science is still important, even if you're doing that. Anybody else have questions for Dr. Powell? I see one. You have to get in there and pass that thing in. Help me out. What's your question? <coughs> what? Med school? Can we talk about it a little bit? Questions about med school. Yeah, med school. Let me just go back and talk about that again. I'll just... What's the answer? Med school. You're going to have to deal with I mean, you're going to have to take a lot of chemistry in medical as an undergraduate to be eligible for medical school. Um, has anybody ever heard of organic chemistry? Yeah. Yeah, I have too. I'm glad I didn't have to take it. Um, my wife took it. She loved it, and I married her anyway. Um, it is really tough. You want to make sure that you have some high school chemistry before you walk into your first college chemistry class, okay? Right, we'll and, one more up here. well, hang on. <laughs> and the physics is really important, and you will have to take calculus in college if you want to go to medical school. Now, let me just share a comment I heard from a, a daughter of a friend of mine who took the MCAT a few years ago, and she said, I had no idea there was going to be that much physics on the MCAT, okay? So... Physics, chemistry, calculus, it's the same formula. If you want to go, let me just point something out. When you put in your medical school application, okay, the most important part of that application, besides the MCAT score, is the grades you earned on the college courses you took. So the grades you earned in physics class, the grades you earned in your chemistry classes, the grade those grades to be B's or A's. You don't want to have struggled in your physics class. You want your physics class to be a breeze, okay? And the way to make sure that's going to happen is with what you do here while you're still in high school. Yep. All right, another question. So, 
Some students don't do well in math early on. I'm and sorry. Some, some students don't do well in math early on, and they sort of just lose any sort of confidence they have in their own math skills. Um, yeah. Going forward, how, how can we encourage our students to achieve more in math if they're maybe a little bit behind? I mean, I think that that's a lot of it, that some people are just scared of math. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, first of all, there's three, three groups of people that have to be convinced that this is important, this issue is important, and one of them is you, okay? You have to understand that mathematics is important to your future. Mathematics is important to your future. The second group of people who need to know it's need to know something. Your parents need to know that mathematics is your future is important to your future, so that they can keep urging you along. Okay. The third group of people, and you're probably a math teacher, or you're not. Your math teachers are incredibly important, and they're working incredibly hard against very long odds, okay? Give your math teacher the chance to help you succeed. Do your homework. Don't chegg your homework for crying out loud, okay? Anybody know what chegg is? Yeah, okay. What, what, what do you use to, yeah. Don't, don't Google your homework. Battle with your homework. You have to learn this stuff. You can learn this stuff unless you have a specific disability with mathematics. You can do better than you think you can. But your math teachers are incredibly important people in your lives. Cut them some slack. Thank them for their work. Okay? That's I don't think there's any, there's no silver bullet here. It's just people have to under, people at all levels have to understand how important mathematics is. The, you're all told how important it is to read, right? How would it sound if you said, well, I'm not a reading person? That wouldn't sound so good, okay? We've got to get to the point where saying, well, I just, I'm not a math person isn't a good thing either. Every one of you is capable of learning mathematics at a pretty high level. And I don't mean you're going to end up being PhD level topologists, okay? I, I'm, I couldn't do that, all right? But you have to learn enough math to understand what's going on in your, math, in your, in your science classes, if you're going to be an economics major, to understand your economics classes, if you're going to be a nurse. The, the subject that trips nursing students up on their licensing exams is math. We need more nurses. A lot of you have probably thought about being nurses. Math is the single biggest obstacle to nurses becoming licensed. Don't let that happen to you. Do we have any more questions for Dr. Cobb? Thank you so much. Big round of applause for Dr. Powell. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming. All right, students, ladies and gentlemen, your fourth people.